there's a need or a passion to get the art out. To me, that's doing something artistic daily. As a photographer, that means taking photographs, images. Did the same thing with whiskey. There's a distiller's cut, and making that cut is at different levels depending on the palate of the distiller. And so they make the cut deep into the tails for them or higher in the tails. It just depends on what your palate is and what you feel. You're making a decision from your creative being. I wanted to make a Western whiskey and I wanted it to put you back into that time, the romantic time of the West. Even though it's a gunfight, it's still romantic. So same with my pictures, same with my art. You want to invoke a feeling. His life is really put into the distillery. It's the art, it's the passion, it's the determination of making this product and believing it. I think I'm the same person I was when I was 16. I drive my truck the same way when I was 16 years old to this day. Riding with Michael is one of the most exhilarating things you'll ever do. Kind of like drinking his whiskey, it packs a punch and you just kind of hold on and go along for the ride. <laughs> I lived in New York with my family. My kids were four and five, three blocks from the World Trade Center. I had a great career as a photographer and um, living in New York and shooting what I wanted to shoot. And then 9-11 um, happened. We crossed Greenwich and we were just inside the block on Duane when the first plane flew over. I think the hardest part about the patients is just you got to stay the course. You got to feel really confident about where you're going because once you commit to it, you can't change it choose your path and then patiently wait to see what happens. You know, we thought it was three years. Yeah, I was like, two years we'll have this down. Yeah, so we and talked to Karen from Montagna and she's like, guys, it's at least seven years. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> thinking, like, Karen's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to take that long. We get long. this fixed in two years. Yeah, but that's just how it goes. Like, it's such slow brand growth. The, yeah. the reward doesn't come for years. Yeah. Great things don't come quickly or without, like, not say that whiskey is suffering, but you almost need that to like, that's where really great things come from. You know, even when I was still in school, I, I took a desk job doing graphic design work. Sitting at a desk all day, clicking a mouse, my job was really comprised of making these interruptive experiences in the form of advertisements that provided the opposite of you know, a good time. They actually annoyed people. And I started looking for other creative outlets. It was the notion of learning something and sucking at something initially. And I always liked sucking at something because there's nowhere to go but up. And that, that climb and that journey to getting better. And ultimately, that's really what led us to Deerhammer was just this expression of creating something that we were so passionate about. The process is absolutely the most influential aspect of our whiskey, and that's what makes us different. Part of what Deer Hammer is about is, is a level of experimentation that we don't believe is happening in the bigger whiskey market. Deer Hammer will take a very traditional process, such as our pot stills, and we make new flavors based on that. Something that's a little out there, maybe a little in left field, but that's the place for craft to get everything to culminate in something that is actually an expression. You know, it's not just whiskey. Always challenging what is to see if it could be what's better. What is an American single malt? Well, we're trying to define that. So there's a tractor running across the field, plowing up the dirt, and you can smell that amazing um, 
fresh earth smell coming off behind the plow. And then you see the farmer and his tractor planting the seed and you see the maltsters cleaning that seed up and getting it ready to process to make exactly what they need to make their product. The heart and soul of the craft distilling industry is an agricultural process. It's the story of my dad, Wayne, my brother, Josh, my grandfather, Bob, his dad, Pappy Ray. There's a story there. It doesn't trivialize it. And I'm afraid that in the old industrial models that we've seen in the last century, that it trivializes it, it commercializes it, and it pushes it out there in mass quantity at minimum cost. Feed barley prices are still as low as they were in the 50s and the 60s when a John Deere tractor cost $1,700, and now a John Deere tractor costs $200,000. But yeah, there was a real sense in which we had to add value to our crops in order to maintain what we knew as life. And our role is to close the gap between the end user and the agriculture. There's a social change going on where people want to know where their products come from. And that social change has been crucial to our success. The reason that they're willing to buy the malt that we produce is because they're not just buying malt. They're buying the story behind the malt. They recognize that what's going into the dirt one cool crisp spring morning is what's going to end up in their barrels in their aging house or in their still in their distillery and eventually in their customers hands with their customers senses evaluating that product in our operation the art of it all um, is, is tied up in a hands-on approach to quality jason and i both have children and that's five generations on the same ground it's our livelihood